Strange Y'all Ride is a show about people, places, and things in the great Northwest. People doing things a little left of center, making things uniquely their own. And you're going to find in this little journey that some of those things come from deep down inside of us. I'm Regan Lane. And I'm Raymond Hayden. And this is Strangely All Right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Strangely All Right. Welcome. Our guest today is a local entrepreneur with a very cool story. He's an acclaimed artist, a husband, father, and a teacher. And his paintings have earned several national awards, as well as his career being covered by major publications throughout the U.S. He is in high demand as a teacher, and he does workshops throughout Europe and the U.S. With us today is Mr. David Gray, and he's going to tell us how he went from drawing his favorite sports heroes in high school, like Michael Jordan, to now creating his fantastic classic traditional oil paintings and selling them around the world. So let's go see what's going on in David's world. That's good. Come on. No matter what he's been doing in life, from a small boy to the time he actually decided to become an artist, David Gray has always drawn. David thought he might become a concert pianist, jet fighter pilot, jazz saxophonist, or physical therapist. He was always drawing as a sort of response to whatever activity he was really into. David did actually get an art degree in college in 1992, but not until his marriage in 1996 did he actually decide to pursue a life as a pictorial artist. In his own words, it was a very naive decision. Up to that time, he knew no artist, but he had talent and everyone saw that. Nobody in his life discouraged him. Even his wife's parents were encouraging. He started making pictures and eventually began to sell them. His start was slow and he waited tables to make most of his income. Eventually, in late 2002, David decided to take the plunge and do art full time. He supports his wife and two children by selling his art and teaching workshops in oil painting all over the United States and in Europe. Right. So all of this is kind of uh, new and different to me. And so what is the fine art community like? So let's define fine art quickly. So it's not necessarily commission work. Nobody's telling you, hey, I need this painting mm -hmm. done. I, I need this decoration done. So, so fine art being the artist is just doing what they want to do. So you have all the way from the upper echelon mucky muck collectors uh, collecting you know, multi-million dollar paintings that make no sense when you look at them. And you got us uh, making pennies for working our ass off. And, okay. Um, so it's, it's, really, it's really all over the place. Um, well, I think for me the, the perception is, is like what you do, what you're involved with and you love is classic tradition. Is that what it's called? Is... Sure. Okay, okay. Well, then my, my question is along the lines of, so is it competitive in this area? To, to sell your work. So let's, okay, so let's narrow it down into just people that do this kind of stuff. See, exactly. Okay. All right, cool. okay. So, um, so over the last 20 years, there's been more of a influx of, you know, changing aesthetics. People are starting to recognize, oh, if I see a Rembrandt, it's actually a legitimate piece of work. Um, whereas before, in the 60s and 70s, um, and before that, developed a whole culture of it's got to be contemporary, it's got to be modern, it's mm -hmm. got to be something that I can't understand for it to be art almost. Okay. So, so you have this whole group of people trying to bring it back. So in that respect, there's not a lot of competition. We actually, uh, to me, what I've experienced is very friendly. So I can go from I can go to the, the East Coast to a studio in New York, mm -hmm. and we can talk about art and realism and Rembrandt and Michelangelo, and we're all really excited and patting each other on the back. So how long have you been selling your art, David? Hmm, ninety six, ninety seven. Started selling paintings. Wow. What what? Uh got you into it? What was the thing that kind of keyed you over? Okay, how much time do you have? We've got about two minutes. Um, I made this very naive decision that I was going to be a professional painter. And um, so I did it. Well, you say you made a decision, but there's something that had you have prompted that. Well, did, did yeah, that? actually that's true. Uh, I got married. I got huh? married. So, so a necessity. I decided I had to quit screwing around and maybe strike a Excellent. So, uh, started painting and then just started selling work 
uh, Guy Gallery to represent me, and uh, just kind of that was how it started. So. Do you remember what your first commission was? Not the dollar amount, but I mean what your first. Uh, commission was. Uh, yeah, my aunt, who was a nurse, um, was doing a presentation on pain, mm -hmm. and so I did. Uh, she wrote a couple of illustrations about different kinds of pain, like acute pain, and just more. And you, had to low level and you had to paint that. So, you asked about, do I ever do anything just out of my head? And so these were actually just completely out of my imagination. Wow. And they were, so I was wrong. And people did see it. See, people did see it. Yeah. And this is, this is in regards to a conversation that we had before we started shooting about you know, the stuff you do mm -hmm. when you're not. Yeah, exactly. So, tell me about this painting right here. Uh, okay, this is a um, sort of a type of commission. Um, this, uh, the model is a girl who was a student of mine, and so I had her pose for it, but basically this for me is something I can show people who might be interested in a commission. And uh, are there misconceptions that people have about you as a person because of the type of art that you so when people hear that I'm an artist, uh -huh. uh, oh yeah, my buddy's going to be there, he's an artist. So first of all, people around here don't take that seriously. They think, oh, he's a hobbyist. He doesn't really make a living. Sure. And when I tell people, well, I support a wife and two kids, they're like, so what do you do? You know, it's like, I just told you what I did. And they, uh -huh. But the other thing is um, just my general appearance, I look more like a contractor or something so um, people don't get and I like to hunt and I like to do guy stuff and play poker and whatever you know uh -huh. and so people that it doesn't follow like they don't you know I like I don't look like you know the cool hat the shades and shirt, you know so you know that would be like that would, so that's kind of an interesting thing okay yeah how long has this place been here uh, we're going on our second year for this location. Okay. But the school itself has been going on for, oh gosh, I don't know, 10 years or something. And you've been teaching how long? In well, I've only been teaching here, this is my second year teaching okay. here. Yeah, so, yeah, there was a guy named Hans Norland who started it. He started out of his garage, started teaching a couple people, and it just started to build. And then Tim Manson in, kind of inherited the school, and so he kept it going. And then um, last year uh, we started working together so now I saw I saw a picture back there of you I believe with like a, a headband a bandana mm -hmm. or something is that a self-portrait yeah, yeah okay yeah. do you wear the headband very often no well I had long hair at that time oh so I if see. you look close <laughs> you can see little 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 waves brunette locks you know <laughs> kind of emerging yeah yeah but I used to wear it more than it's very artsy. You know. So, uh, inspiration. I've just been really inspired by just the, what we call the classical tradition. Uh, work starting in the Renaissance and continuing on to. Um, I mean, I could, you have Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo, you know, in the high Renaissance. Um, and then the next big one for me would be Carvaggio. I don't know that I could really explain why I like it. I just do. It's, 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 uh, the draftsmanship is superb. It's just his grasp of pictorial elements. Uh, he just puts it together to make this amazing um, statement. Which, and I think that's important. If you can explain everything about why a piece of art is great, I'm not sure it's David, where did you go to school at? Did you go to school around here? Uh, yeah, I went to, uh, you talking about high school? I would start elementary. I went to Harvard Elementary. This is outside Tacoma City Limits. Okay. I uh, went to Franklin Pierce High School. And then I went to uh, Pacific Lutheran University. Oh. DLU. All in Tacoma. Oh. That's a great school. Yeah, it's a good school for nursing, business, education, 
Did you start uh, follow, Did you start following your artistic <laughs> ambitions in PLU? Uh, did you start feeling like you would? You would? Yeah, start? yeah. I I actually I went to to PLU as a biology major. I was going to become a physical therapist. Okay. So um, that's kind of ties into some of my sports background. Um, <clears throat> so I was going to get my, my BS in science or biology and then go to PT school. While I was there, though, I well, to make a long story short, I changed majors to art. Uh, I should have changed schools as well, but I didn't. I just stayed there. <laughs> so PLU wasn't really the art school for you. How did you uh, pursue getting the training you needed to do what you do now today? The, you know, we did have a good drawing teacher. Uh, I did learn how to draw well. Um, and, I mean, it was it was a good school for what it was. It just... I just probably should have moved on. Um, when I finally came back to wanting to be an artist, um, I just l leaned on my natural abilities. And um, I'm kind of an independently minded guy, and I kind of think maybe a little egotistical too, so I'm thinking, I can teach myself, right? So I did teach myself up to a point. Um, and I was actually selling work in galleries, but then I hit a wall okay. um, with my abilities, and that's when I started to fall back on, okay, what's out there? And going back to the whole change in aesthetic and a change in interest and wanting to learn the craft, mm -hmm. like you have to do in every other art discipline, except for visual art for some reason. Um, there, people were starting to put out materials and get workshops and stuff like that. It's the diamond, diamond in the rough. Diamond in the rough. Yeah. Uh, well, so, yeah. Well, speaking of the workshops, um, now you currently do some workshops mm -hmm. in Europe and in the in the throughout the U.S. What are so, those? What are the are those workshops? Different types of workshops, or do you have one kind of platform? No, it's kind of the same. Um, essentially, in a matter of days, I just take people through my particular process which um, it's really the fundamentals of picture making, but of course I've got my little quirky ways of applying the fundamentals. So I, I teach them basically the fundamentals, this is how I do it, and that's what they want to learn. They want to how does Dave Gray make a painting? And so um, the whole, I think, market there is developed behind this mystique about making a painting, but Why is it, what's the I, process? Well, I have to break it down for them and it, disappoint everyone because it's... it's well, it's never <laughs> what it seems. <laughs> well, because, you know, as musicians, I mean, I, I, you know, we've been, both of us have been interviewed lots of times on the yeah. radio over yeah. the years, and what do they always want to know? Tell us about your songwriting process. Yeah. How does that go? You know, and it's like, well, you know, you wonder why people want to know that, but it's important. It, people it, like to know it, behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think for me, um, it's it's just essentially the fundamentals um, applied through this filter, mm -hmm. which is stuff you can't teach. Right. You know, I can't teach you how to be this filter, I, but I can teach you the fundamentals. How does that work to sell a painting in other parts of the country? How, how, does, how, does, how does someone find your art? Uh, people have to make their choice in the end. I mean, there's still people today that will not buy a realist painting, no matter how expensive or not expensive it is, just because to them it's passe. It's not relevant to our modern age. You know, so they're only going to look at something that they don't really understand. <laughs> you know, because somehow it relates to the ambiguity of uh, our, you know, our culture. And if you see a particular segment of the population embracing something, of course, it's always going to drag more people with it. So, um, yeah, it's coming back. I mean, the the big, you know, the master works that that people in my art genre love. They're starting to get. Um, like at the big auctions, they're starting to get the prices that they're worth instead. You know, 20, 30 years ago, they were pennies. You had to be dead to But sell. now, yeah, but now, you know, you can get a, 
well, whatever. It's just gonna it's gonna cost you in the multi millions to get something, whereas maybe 30 years ago you could pick it up for fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars. How does how does someone find your art? Oh, on the east coast okay. or the southwest? Or? Well, I use gallery representation, mm -hmm. so um, I've just had different galleries represent me, and uh, um, so I've had people. I've, I used to have a gallery, you know, on Martha's Vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, and, oh, wow. um, I've sold work in Denver, uh, Scottsdale, Santa Fe. Um, and a different group shows at different different places in the country. All right, Raymond, another one in the books. Oh yeah, strange. All right, episode number five. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this episode like we enjoyed doing it, and we uh, we hope to see you again next month. On the first, Strangely Alright TV. Take care.